Hi, my name is Megan Hollis, and today we're going to be talking about job search strategies. So a little bit of an overview about what we're going to be covering today. Um, we're going to talk quickly about the outcome, so what you're trying to get out of this presentation. Um, some tips that you can take away, five tips total, we'll keep it short. Um, and then some next steps, and then some commonly asked questions that we get in this subject area. So the first thing we want to cover is the learning outcomes. What are you going to get out of today, or what are we hoping you're going to get out of today? So hopefully today you'll get, no get knowledge of the job search process, and that includes application tips, your materials that you're going to need for this process, um, general research tips, and then some resources to help you find those opportunities. Some competencies that you're hopefully going to develop today are, um, or focus on today, are your experience in digital technology, so how you can leverage that in your job search, um, but also career management as a whole. So the first tip that we want to talk about today is to plan for your experience. So what is this process going to look like? Um, generally, overall, you want to make sure that you allow enough time um, to find this opportunity, develop relationships in your industry, to prepare your materials, things like that. Um, so when you're thinking about the length of time that it might take to go through this process, um, you can think about each of these different um, five steps might take two to four weeks. So total, that might add up to an 18, four, eight to 16 week process. Um, when you're getting to that last year at FSU, we usually say start job searching or start preparing your materials two semesters before you graduate, just so you have enough time. Um, so allow enough time, definitely want to make sure you do that. Know the steps involved. So when you get to that interview process or when you get to that first or second round interview process, it's okay to ask an employer you know, where are you in the hiring process um, to get a sense of where you might be in that, um, to give you a better timeline of, you know, how those things progress. One thing to remember is to be active and not passive. So it's easy to go and post your resume on sites like Handshake or Indeed.com um, and kind of just hope that the jobs come your way. That's not the best way to approach it, um, so you want to make sure that you are actively engaging, and that means networking with people around you, that means actively applying for positions and following up, and making sure you're staying on top of this process to keep it moving and not get stagnant. And it's really important to stay organized. If you're applying to, say, five to ten jobs a week or a day, you might lose track of each one that you apply to, which resume or which cover letter you submitted. Um, so however you stay organized, find a system. There are applications and online sites to help you with this, like Jibberjobber, or if you're an Excel spreadsheet person, you can keep track of each one that way. But find your organization style and stick with what works for you. The second tip is to develop job search targets. So it's easy to go into a job search saying, I'll do anything, I'm really excited, yes, just hire me. Um, it's not the best way to do it, just because that doesn't help you narrow down what you're trying to do. You can't physically apply to every job. You don't want to do that. It's not a good use of your time and energy. Um, so things that you might use to narrow down your job search are your values, your interests, your skills, and how that matches up with an employer. So you can focus on a specific industry, a position type, an organization, or a location. Um, and then all of those come together to form your job search target. The third tip is to make sure you're doing your research. So you wouldn't go into an interview or into a job search not knowing anything about an organization. So some resources that you can use to help um, identify different opportunities would be Handshake for FSU students and alumni. Um, also, the Career Center Library has a lot of great online resources and print resources that you can use to do research about companies um, all over the country, all over the world. Some general resources that you can find online that would help you do research about trends in a specific industry, salaries, things like that, would be the Occupational Outlook Handbook and ONET. Those are great resources you can find online. Um, when you get to the space where you're ready to talk to specific companies, um, you definitely want to make sure you check out their website, their LinkedIn page. Um, a lot of uh, companies will have a specific company page on LinkedIn um, that will also connect you to current and previous employees that you may want to reach out to. Um, and then check out their social media as well. So those are great places to start. Glassdoor.com is another good resource um, for not just company information, but for possible interview questions that you may encounter once you get to that step in the process. And then look up what that company is in the news for. Um, so is it good? Is it bad? Is it something that might pique your interest or prompt a question that you might, might ask in an interview? So all of those are great places to start when you're thinking about doing your research. So the fourth tip is to make sure you use your network. So what is your network? Your network is your personal and professional connections, people. So when you think about a network, you think about your people resources. 
Um, so you can attend networking events like Seminole Success Night or the Veterans Connection to help you connect to people um, in a specific industry. You can create a LinkedIn account. It's an online, resources, an online resource that will help you connect to people that way. Um, and then you can also kind of use LinkedIn as a way to kind of keep track of the people that you meet. So anytime you meet somebody at a networking event or at a club meeting that you want to keep track of, add them as a LinkedIn connection. You can connect with a professional mentor. So FSU has a database of friends and alum of FSU who volunteer to have their information available in case you've got questions about the industry that you're going into or their specific career path. So another great way to connect to a specific person or industry. But also make sure you're discussing your goals so with the people around you. So people who can help you include professors, family members, um, previous supervisors, friends, things like that. If they are not aware of what you're trying to accomplish, they can't help you. So make sure you have those conversations with people when you're ready to start that job search process. And then the best way to make sure you're prepared to meet these people, to add people to your network, is to develop a 30-second elevator speech. So how would you introduce yourself to somebody that you just met that you want to keep as a connection? Um, you can think about things like your major, your GPA, if that's important to a job description, um, and then things that you want them to know. So bottom lines, like why would they hire you, or why, are, why would they add you as a connection? What value do you bring um, to that specific relationship? The last tip is to make sure that you're being prepared. Um, so what does that mean? That means making sure your application documents are ready for this process. You can bring your resume to the Career Center. Um, you can show it to mentors, to professors. Get as many eyes on it as you can, um, just to make sure that the content is there, that there's no spelling and grammar errors, um, that it's ready for that job search process. Cover letters, those are also great re resources. Um, so chances are you'll be asked for a cover letter when you start applying for jobs. Um, so that's again something that the Career Center can help you out with in terms of reviewing it or drafting it for the first time if you've never written one before. Um, and things that can help you focus on your interviewing skills if you haven't inter interviewed in a long time or if you've never done it before include our mock interview program. Um, so it's a great way to practice one-on-one -on -one mock interviews, Skype mock interviews, panel mock interviews, phone interviews, any type of way that you would interview, the Career Center can help you plan for that. And then also we have an employer in residence program. So employers will physically come to the Career Center and provide students advice through resume critiques or mock interviews or cover letter critiques or just general conversation about a specific industry. So those are some great resources to take advantage of. So what are your next steps? Make sure you can take advantage of the resources that we talked about today. So for example, in Handshake, you can start looking for jobs and favoriting them, favoriting jobs, favoriting employers, so you can see when employers post jobs if you're interested in a specific company. So make sure you take advantage of that resource that's available to you. Have your resume and cover letter critiques by the Career Center. We welcome frequent visitors, so if you want to come in, bring and write your first draft in, um, you can have us critique it, and then maybe once you make those edits, if you want another set of eyes on it, you can bring it again. Um, but make sure you have that document looked at by somebody in the Career Center before you start applying for jobs. And make sure you complete a mock interview. You can schedule those mock interviews through Handshake, um, so those are available throughout the semester. Some common, uh, commonly asked questions that we get about related to the job search process are, what are some mistakes that students might make? So things that we see happen that might not be so great in a job search process would be a poorly written cover letter or resume, um, not great interviewing skills, not great professional dress, um, and just a general un underpreparedness. So again, we have a lot of resources at the Career Center that are available in person and online to help you make sure that you're prepared with your best professional self. Um, for this process. Is it important to include a cover letter? How, is important, how important is a cover letter? Sometimes you'll see employers ask just for a resume or ask for a resume and a cover letter. A cover letter never hurts an application. It's an opportunity to self, set yourself apart from a candidate who may not have included one, for an employer to get to know you a little bit better, and to sell your skills. Um, so I would always suggest writing a cover letter. And again, if you've never written one before, that can be kind of intimidating. So come to the Career Center and we'll help you get that started. The last question is, what's a, what is a hidden job market? So the hidden job market is a network of opportunities that never get posted anywhere, that are filled simply through connecting with people. So increasing your network, having a LinkedIn profile, talking with people in your industry helps you get access to that hidden job market. So you're not missing out on those opportunities. Okay. So that's all we have for this session today. Um, make sure you check out our other videos. And thanks, and have a great day.